the Gospel of Luke. I'm going to cover a lot of ground tonight because I'm going to share something extremely serious and important to the body of Christ, the bride. There's a lot of things going on in the body today in the church and believers' lives. We're going to call them good believers' lives. Uh, that that it's, it's against the will of God. Now we know we live in a dangerous world. It's very dangerous, very perilous in many, many regards. And we know that we have an enemy. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual weakness, and high places. Now, Paul and the apostles were teaching a, a, a strong message so they could say to the people, we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. But I, I, there's a lot of ignorance I discover today in the body of Christ. And the, re, the reason why I can say that is because of, of uh, you, you watch the sermons being preached, um, you read the books they're writing, and you can see there's a real lack of knowledge. The Bible says in the last days, there's not going to be a famine of food or a bread or water, but of the truth. And, and there's a real famine of the truth. The good news is we still have the word so we can come back to the truth and we can really see what it says. But we'll talk a little bit about Job tonight, how the devil showed up in heaven and uh, he was accusing Job before God and he, he wanted to get his hands on Job. He wanted to kill Job. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now right away you, you might say, well, the devil can't get me. He, 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 can't, he can't do anything to me. And uh, uh, so th that's a wonderful statement, but uh, do, you have, do you have what it takes to make it a reality? I, I, and, and here's the uh, shocking statement I'm going to make. There's a lot of Christians that are dying before their time. A lot of Christians. Most Christians are going to die before their time uh, because they're out of the will of God. Now, I want, I want you to listen very carefully now. I'm, I'm not saying they didn't go to heaven. I'm just saying we are in a war. Uh, I was come from a long line of military people. And uh, I know some of you are very familiar with the military. And let me tell you something. When, when you're going to war, uh, they, they try to prepare you for what's going to happen for you don't get killed the first day you're out on the battlefield. And I guarantee there was a lot, of, a lot of soldiers who died that should not have died if they would have listened to their, their trainers, their instructors, their sergeants, their drill sergeants. But they didn't listen. Jesus said you need to have ears to hear and eyes to see. And there's a lot of times the enemy finds a way into our life. And I want to show you what Jesus said. I saw this many years ago. Uh, I'm going to try to tread very softly tonight because I know people could get highly offended at this. Uh, I can't help it. Truth is truth. And I'm going to teach the truth to try to help as many people as I can. For the devil doesn't take you out of this world before he should. I don't know why. I just, a couple months ago, I heard about a well-known person I knew that died from cancer. And yet we know the Bible says by the stripes of Christ we're healed. And I began to do an investigation. I found 18 well-known men within the last decade, uh, two decades, that have died before their time. Now, I'm not talking about martyrship, okay? There are those who give their lives for the kingdom, like Stephen did. So I'm not talking about people who died from old age. I'm talking about people who died from diseases and infirmities that they should not have, or even uh, accidents they should not have. And then people make such stupid statements. Well, I guess it was their time. No, no, it wasn't their time. You know, God promised us, with long life will I satisfy thee. Did you know God promised that? That's a promise. How many, how, we'll see, God can't, God can't break his word. So if, if we're not apprehending these promises, it, it's not, God's not the problem. I'm the problem. Say, I'm the problem. And there, there's too much pride. I'm telling you, a lot of people, I, I can admit that readily. There's been a lot of times in my life uh, I, I didn't live where I should have been living and to where bad things... Now, I'm not saying bad things won't happen when you live for Christ because don't be surprised at the fiery trial which is about to try you. Listen to what Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him 
there were some people gathered around Jesus of Galileans, and they were Jewish people, Luke chapter 13, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. These were people that Pilate had gathered together and martyred them, not for the gospel's sake. Listen to what, now, now I want you to listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answering and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. Listen to this. I tell you, nay. Here's the words of Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said now. Wow. Amazing. But except you what? Except you repent, you shall all, say shall all, likewise perish. So he's talking to the whole crowd. He's saying, you know how those Galileans, how they were, they were slayed and their blood was used for sacrifice. He said, unless all of you, those of you within the sound of my voice, repent. We'll talk about what repentance really is. You shall likewise perish. But now he didn't stop there. Listen to what he said. Are those 18 upon whom the tower and shalom fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? So now he's talking about a group of 18 men that a tower in Shalom had come crashing down, fell on top of them, and they died. And he says, do you think those people were more wicked than you, more ungodly than you? He said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. So I'm going to make a statement here. Um, I've already said it, but I'm going to tell you again, and I know you, you, you don't get offended. You need to listen to the whole message. Any time somebody dies before the Lord takes them home, takes away their breath, or martyrship, it's because they didn't repent. They didn't repent. Now, what do you mean they re repent? Now, we've always understood repentance as meaning turning away from sin. But repentance is a gift. I remember one, uh, right up around this about 20 years ago, I did a message. I, I took, a, I, I took a, a box and I wrapped it all up in beautiful paper and I told the congregation, I said, listen, I, I said, underneath in the natural, the world, on Christmas you get a gift because God gave his son. That's why they do it. And they put gifts under the tree. I said, well, God's put all kinds of gifts under the tree the cross that Christ hung on, and I pulled out this gift, and one of these gifts, <clears throat> you all been kicking away. I said, it's the greatest gift that God has given you. And I said, that, and I'd kick it and go pick it up and kick it and book, kind of dra drastic, you know, and I said, it's the gift of repentance. It's the gift of repentance. He said, come on, Pastor Mike, you're telling me if somebody dies from a car accident, if somebody dies from a disease, if so, a believer, I'm talking about believers now, if somebody dies before their time is because they didn't have repentance in their life. Now, I, I'm telling you, I want you to listen very carefully. I didn't say they went to hell. See, there's, there's levels of repentance. And a lot of people assume repentance this simply means uh, uh, outright disobedience, adultery, fornication, witchcraft, hate, bitterness, uh, lying, stealing, killing, murdering, uh-uh, uh-uh. So let, let's just, I want to read this in another translation. It was just at this moment that some people came up to Jesus the story, and told him the story of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with them that, uh, ha, uh, of their own sacrifices. Jesus made this reply to them. Are you thinking that these Galileans were worse sinners than any other men of Galilee because this happened to them? Is this what you're thinking? And the answer was yes. That's how they thought in those days. That, that, see, that's how the Jewish people saw it. The Jewish people saw that if you died before your time, that's, that was their, their theology that it was because you were out of the will of God. Well, guess what? They were right. But, he said, just because you're not dying at this moment doesn't mean you're hunk of door, you're okay. Then he goes on to say this, I assure you that this is not so. 
you will all die just as miserable of a death unless your, listen this, unless your hearts are changed. Your hearts are changed. We're going to get into much deeper detail. You remember those 18 people who were killed at Shalom when the tower collapsed upon them? Are you imagining that they were worse offenders than any of the other people who live in Jerusalem? Are you show, sure you they were not? You think those characters were worse than anybody else in Jerusalem? And Jesus said, no, they weren't. They, they weren't worse than you people. L listen this. I assure you they were not. You will all die as tragically unless your whole outlook is changed. Now, now here's a little bit. Your outlook is changed, okay? So let's talk about a little bit of information about repentance. It means to change one mind and purpose as a result of having knowledge. Say knowledge. It means, it, repentance doesn't mean you're just running away from that which is against the will of God. You're running to that which is the will of God. You get this now? You're not just running away from what's against God's nature, God's character, God's plan, God's purpose, God's will, God's intent, God's desire, God's character, God's nature. Uh, Saturday night, I really want to get into deep details, the nature of God and the nature of the devil, okay? Because that's, what that's what's going on. We're being fought over like expensive real estate, the satanic world and the heavenly world, and you're the real estate in the middle, and, and whatever nature you end up having dominate your life will determine your eternity. But it says to change one's mind and purpose as a result of having knowledge. Uh, it, it's in the true sense of one's own. It, it, number one, it's a true sense of your own guilt or sinfulness or disobedience to the will of God. The will of God. It's, it's you understanding, hey. I'm not lining up with God's will. I'm not lining up with God's nature. I'm not God. Repentance first has to start by you acknowledging there's something wrong with me, man. <laughs> something just ain't working right. It's like having a car and you got this knock in your engine and your engine isn't running right. And you say, oh, there's nothing wrong with this engine. I know my wife one time, she's coming home and we call it the idiot light comes on and there is no oil. And so she pulled over and she thought, well, I'll make it home. Well, how I many you know uh, she destroyed the engine? I mean, a perfectly beautiful, wonderful four-wheel drive Ford van, which I really liked. And she wrecked the engine because the, the light came on and she ignored the light now let's let's look at this tonight people are ignoring what's wrong with their thoughts their desires their attitudes their motives their purposes and they think everything's going to be hunkadori be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about seeking, seeking whom he may devour. Now, the good news is this, that the devil is not all-knowing. Praise the Lord. He, he doesn't know, he, doesn't, he didn't know that the hedge around Job was down. The hedge around Job was down, and, and uh, someday I'll write a book on it, and Job lowered the hedge. You know how Job did it? Because he wasn't thinking right. His believing was wrong. His understanding was wrong. Listen, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Well, well what do they got to do? They got to repent. What do they get? They got to change their mind. Okay, I, 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 you know, and here's the thing. You can, you can sincerely believe that the sickness you have in your body is given to you by God and go to heaven but you are wrong and it will kill you. You see that? I mean, I've heard a lot of people say that God gave me this to learn me a lesson. No, you know how we learn? By the word. <laughs> you learn by the word. And then you apply the word to your experience, to your situation. And so repentance is a true, a true sense. You have an awakening of your guilt. And, 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 and you're out of the will of God. Number two, you begin to apprehend God's mercy. That's provided by Christ. That's a part of repentance. You, now you begin, to, you begin to apprehend God's mercy. Say, I need God's mercy. 
That's why the Bible says we come boldly before the throne of grace in a time of need that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Okay, number three. There, you're not being uh, developed in you a, a hatred of sin and a hatred. I'm talking about in your life, in your life. You, you don't have a hate for sin in people's lives yeah, because I say, hear people say, well, you hate sin, uh, but you love the sinner. Well, OK, so but I'm not a, I'm not on a crusade against anybody else's sin. I'm on a crusade against any and anything that is not a faith is sin. You see, repentance doesn't just begin uh, repentance is a, is a moment by moment daily as God gives you revelation, as God gives you knowledge, as God gives you understanding and you repent. You say, oh, Lord, forgive me. I believe this, but that was wrong. This is what your word says. OK, I'll give you a couple examples of my life. So it's a turning. It, it's 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 a hatred for 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 even wrong doctrines. It's a it's a hatred for lies. It's a hatred for for anything inside of you that contradicts. The will, the character, the personality, the nature, the heart, the plan of God. You hate it. You hate it. Okay? People need to repent from not coming to church. They do. Because the Father says do it. Right? Well, whatever place, you know, God leads you. You know, I'm, I'm not into numbers and build. I'm just doing what God called me to do and uh, just let it fall where it may. You know, I think they used to say the buck stops here and, and that's about it. Listen, so it's a hatred of anything that contradicts or turns you away from the will and the word of God. Now, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about any doctrine, any philosophy, any theology. It, it, it's a persistent endeavor to walk in the divine nature and the commandments of God because you've decided to apprehend what God has created you to be by faith in Christ. That, that's repentance. Repentance says, I'm going to apprehend God. I, forgive me. I've been living for myself. I, I've been doing it my way. I've been thinking my thoughts. I've been pursuing my dreams. And I repent of that. And I want nothing but you. It's like David said, whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none on earth I desire besides thee. You say, well, you got to stop living, though. No. no, then you just begin to experience living. <laughs> That's when life gets exciting. That's when you learn how to be content when you're hungry and, and, and when, you're, when you're full. When, you're, when, you're, uh, when you have nothing and when you have everything because your life is not built on that physical realm that's all passing away say it's all passing away it's a change of a heart of your heart your mind and your spirit is to turn away from the old life repentance needs to be applied every time you discover repentance is applied every time you discover in your heart see i can't repent for you <laughs> i can't repent for my wife i can't say lord i repent for my wife i repent i repent i repent for my sons you know job was trying to do that did you know job was doing that Job was burning sacrifices all the time because his kids, he didn't raise them right. And they were always having drunkard, drunken parties, you know, and he couldn't repent for them. He said, oh, poor adventure. They sinned in word or deed or thought. Well, sure they were, man. They were, they were living lives of flesh. And Job thought he could repent for them. You can't. The only one you can repent for is yourself. And so the minute you discover that you're out of the will of God in thought, desire, belief, that's contrary to who God is and his thoughts, you repent of it. You say, now, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want to think that. I don't want to talk that. I don't want to live that. I don't want to act like that. I don't want to do that. I repent, Lord, and, and I'm coming home like the prodigal son. So you set your heart towards heaven. I'm coming. I'm coming, God. I'm coming. I'm coming. What does that do? That shuts the door on the devil. That shuts the door on the devil. See, man, when he was in the garden, when he ate of that tree of the knowledge good and evil, you know, it's amazing. Man starts out in the garden where he can choose from all that is good, and, and, and there's only one tree that's evil. Now we live in a world that has flipped it. And now everywhere we look, there's evil. And there's only one tree we're supposed to eat from. <laughs> and that's the tree of life. And what's his name? Jesus. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. So the whole thing is flipped. So people say, I've got so many choices. No, you don't. Eat his flesh and drink his blood or you're dead. 
I mean, that's the choice you got. I'm telling you, that's what Christianity is. We choose to eat from Christ who hung on the tree in order to redeem us. We eat from his blood, his flesh, and we drink from his blood. Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remissions of sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So repentance is preached uh, even in the book of Revelation. You know how many times Jesus says to the church, repent, 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 repent. Repentance isn't something you do. And I know a lot of so-called people are getting born again without repentance. And, 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 and tears are full. Okay, so the Spirit of God, the seed of God is sown into their soil. But repentance is the, the removing from your soil all that would kill the life of God in you. All, you know, thistles and thorns and briars and everything, weeds. Uh, we are defeated... Listen to this. We are defeated and die early because we have not repented. I'm going to say again, I, I know people will agree with this, but I can prove it to you scripturally. I just read what Jesus said, that the people who, that, the, that, that Pilate murdered, and then the tower that fell on them in Shalom, those 18 people, Jesus said, unless you all repent, you're all going to die early lives. That's what he said. He said, unless you repent, unless you what? See it my way. Believe it my way. Do it my way. Act upon it the way I tell you to do it. Take my truth. Hide it in your heart and do it the way I said. And if you don't, you will die early. Now listen, I'm going to tell you again because there will be people who are watching who are totally going to misunderstand this. I didn't say they went to hell. I just said, if you want to shut the door on the devil, and if you want to live a long, prosperous life, you're going to have to live a life of repentance. And the moment that Mike Yeager finds out that I have a theology, a philosophy, an attitude, an emotion, an attitude, you ask my kids and my wife how many times I apologize <laughs> all through these years. When I find out when I'm wrong, then I say, oh, Lord, now you cannot repent until you know what's wrong. And you will not know what's wrong unless you're being taught the truth. And then even though you don't know what's wrong and you can't repent of it, that's a door for the devil to get in. The devil, he takes advantage of our ignorance of truth. He, before I got born again, I didn't know I had authority in the name of Jesus. And I mean, did the devil beat me up? I mean, I didn't know that I had power if I would look to Jesus. I didn't know there was forgiveness of sins. I didn't know there was peace and joy and love and life. I didn't know there could be a changed character in a nature. Uh, so, uh, so we are defeated and we die early because we have not repented. And what do we repent of? Not knowing, believing, acting on God's word, speaking and receiving what God said is truth. That's what we got to repent of. There's people out here that don't believe the Holy Ghost is for today, that speaking in tongues is up for today, and I'm going to prove to you scripturally, they'll never get baptized in the Holy Ghost until they repent for believing that lie. I'm going to prove it. Paul said it. They got to repent. See, until you repent for believing a lie, you'll never get free. And even if freedom could come, the devil's going to take it from you right away because you haven't pulled down that stronghold. See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now you say, well, Pastor Mike, what if you die early from some terrible disease or an accident? Well, there is an area of my life I did not repent from. Now I'm going to say again, doesn't mean I'm not right with God because on Saturday night, I'll talk about the works of the flesh that will damn a believer's soul to hell. Yes, there are. The works of the flesh, if you involve yourself in them, it will help you know that's true. It will damn your soul to hell, okay? But there's a lot of works in the flesh that won't damn our soul to hell. It won't damn our soul to hell. Because God knows we're never going to absolutely apprehend in this life. Now, I know a lot of people really want to step up in the ministry. Well, listen, you got to understand, in a real battle, in a real war, guess where the most dangerous place is? It's not in the back, it's in the front lines. And that's why the Bible says, don't put a novice into office, and don't put him in a position, lest the enemy get an advantage over him. The enemy is going to get an advantage over him. James, listen to this. 4 6, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, listen to this, and giveth grace unto the, 
Now what in the world does that have to repentance? The only thing that's stopping you from repenting is when somebody presents the truth to you and you don't repent is pride. People get highly offended if you, if you challenge them where they're, in, where they're at in their faith walk. And to me, that is insane. You can challenge me about where I'm at in my faith walk. Because faith is developed. Faith, faith is, is, it's got to grow. And there's been many times in my life where my faith in Christ wasn't where it should have been. And so you, you, you could say to me, well, Pastor, there's times I've confronted, uh, I've been attacked by the devil, and, and I didn't have faith. Uh, to overcome that obstacle, but I did know something. I knew about the mercy of God. So I would begin to cry out for the mercy, the mercy, the mercy. God have mercy, and that's all I'd cry. God, I need mercy. I'm not where I need to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not being able to handle this thing. And Lord, I, I just need mercy. I know I'm not where I need to be spiritually. And and you know what? His mercy would come. And and I think people need to repent for not crying out to God for mercy. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I think people need to repent and say, Father, forgive me for not uh, crying out for your mercy. Um, and it says, listen, it says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Listen, submit yourself, therefore, to God. That's what we're talking about. It says, humble yourself and submit. That's repentance. Here I am, Lord. I, I, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't see it. I'm not experiencing it, but I, I believe you. And so, God, here I am, God. Let your word be real. You be true. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he said it? You know, he's going to do what he says. So the enemy is going to attack. So what, what, what do you do when the enemy attacks? Well, it, 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 what you do is you attack the devil. How? By submitting to God. You're not a victim. Repent for having a victim mentality. <laughs> Never have a victim mentality. That's what Paul was dealing with in Romans when it says that nothing was separated from the, from, from the love of Christ. He says, uh, we're nothing but sheep for the slaughter because that's what the believers were saying. And he says, nay, in all, say nay. <laughs> In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. And um, so every, every, every uh, I'll tell you what, uh, let me give you a quick example. Last Saturday, I went into the restroom. I had to uh, empty my bladders. And uh, I stand over the toilet. I'm doing my business, as they say, getting rid of, you know, we call it making water. And, and I got done. And, and I looked down, and the toilet was full of blood. Now, not just full of blood. Blood was splattered around the ring. I'm thinking, uh-oh, somebody's got a problem in my family. I'm not thinking me. Somebody's got a problem in my family. So they were all out there, including my son and his wife, Daniel. And so I, I went out, and, and I said, hey, you guys, are you all okay? And they said, what, Dad? I said, are you guys okay? They said, what do you mean? I said, the toilet's full of blood. They said, oh, no, Dad, I just went there. Not, now, listen, I'm not thinking. I thought, okay, I don't know what's going on. Everybody says they're okay. So I really was feeling weak and I, I tired, so I went to bed at 8.30 at night. My wife comes to bed, and about 1 o'clock, I got an urge to, to, uh, my, to relieve myself again. And so I go into the bathroom and turn the light on, and I go, and here comes blood. Blood coming on my body. Bright blood, dark blood, I'm going, okay, now I've got a battle on my hands. See, I have no fear. I don't have no fear. People need to repent for having fear. I have no fear in my heart. And, and I'm telling you, I know from my experience, most Christians that we call, I'm not talking about Baptists or Lutheran or Methodists. I'm talking about Pentecostal Christians. They would uh, be running into the hospital right away. Here I go. Well, I got a doctor. I had a, and I don't have to set up an, a doctor appointment. He's open all the time. So I went out and I told Kathy, I said, hey, Kathy, I said, just pray with me. I said, uh, me, remember this morning, that blood? Yeah, well, that was me. And I said, I just went to the bathroom. And, and, and from that moment forward, every time I would go, and sometimes it'd be pretty heavy and other times it'd be pretty light. And so I said, well, I'm going to just stay up and pray. And she got, she Googled it right away and said, oh, you might have this and this and this. I won't even tell you what they said it could be, you know. And uh, so I went downstairs and I'm praying. I said, okay, Lord, I said, your word says, this is what the Bible says. This is what I believe. See, now, now see, 
I know in my heart, listen, for me, I know in my heart, if I run off, I'm, I'm not afraid of dying. If I'm, for me to run off to the doctors, I'd be out of the will of God. Uh, says, cursed is the man whose trust is in the arm of the flesh. That scripture is real to me. Doesn't mean God curses you, it's just uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I'm telling you, I discovered all of these 18 well-known preachers who died early, they all went to the medical world. Every single one of them. Well-known preachers. Well-known, they went to the medical world. Well, I've learned since I was a 19-year-old kid to go to God. So I, 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 I went downstairs and I'm talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, what's going on? And he reminded me. He said, on my anniversary, you and your wife went kayaking. Remember that? I said, yeah. He said, in the kayak, the guy, it was a two-seat kayak. It was uh, put in the water like this because it was kind of a steep incline, right? And real low sitting. And they had real hard plastic bumps. So I went to crawl in, and when I, the, 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 the gravitation and the wave of the water threw me into the kayak, and I landed on top of my private areas. I mean, hard. Wham! I went down hard on it, and, and, and right away, pain flooded my body, and, and I didn't say nothing because I'm just not that kind of guy. I, you know, I just don't. I say, I, and I quietly, I said, he lined up. I said, in Jesus' name, I didn't really speak over a lot. I didn't grab myself. You know, I'm just, in Jesus' name, I knew it, you know. And so I got in, and it's hurting, you know. So we went uh, a little bit, and then we finally got it. It was so uncomfortable, and we got a regular canoe then. So this one, nothing happened. But on Saturday now, here comes the blood. So Sunday morning, I, I stay up all night. I'm just praying. I'm not operating in fear. Sunday morning, I got up, and uh, blood is still coming, you know, and uh, thick and light and thick and light. And so Sunday night, I told, had the brothers lay on me, the leadership. I said, guys, lay your hands on me. I'll tell you, I just want to tell you what happened very quickly. So I told them. They laid their hands on me and they prayed. So, Brother Gary's up here preaching. Now, what I did, because the blood was flowing, I'd stick toilet paper down between myself and, and my outer garment. And I'm sitting, and all of a sudden, I feel myself being covered, wet. I said, okay. So, I went into the bathroom, and I'm standing over the urinal. And, Howard, it was... I'm not talking... I know they say if you take a, tea, a teacup full of blood, it looks like it's... No, it's... It's coming. It's a stream of nothing but blood coming out of me. I said, okay. I said, Gary can handle this, and the guys are here. They can handle this. I'm going home. Now, listen, no fear in my heart. I know I'm in a battle. I know I've got to do the will of God. I know the truth. See, Job didn't know this stuff. When the devil attacked Job, he didn't know this stuff. So I've done this for 45 years with a broken back, with a busted kneecap, with a busted foot, with a colon cancer, tumors. I've done this. This has been my life of faith for 45 years. I'm not saying it makes the battle any less difficult. So I go home, right? And I, I go into my, my bedroom. I got to go to the bathroom, you know. And what I did then is I laid in bed, right? And, 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 and I'm just remembering all the miracles that God has done for me. Quoting, I said, God, when I had this, you did this. When you, you, I had this, you did this. And I said, devil, you're not killing me. I said, I'm not going nowhere. God ain't done with me yet. I'm standing on the word. I believe in the word. Father, I thank you I'll live and not die. Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. See, I'm in the will of God. I'm, and I checked my heart. There was no known sin in my heart as far as I knew. Anything. I was in rebellion to God. I wasn't involved in any part participating in, act, in the activity of the flesh no bitterness in my heart I mean the first thing you do is you check your heart and say Lord if there be any wicked way in me show me and I'll repent real quick so because I know repentance is the key in uh, walking into God's fullness so this is what's going on people and so I, I go through all of these things you know and every time I'm going to the restroom uh, the blood began to lessen and lessen and so I finally fall asleep you know the next morning I got up and uh, I'm thanking God. I thank you, Lord. I'm healed. You know, this is Monday. I thank you. I'm free. I'm, I'm okay. And, uh, my, my, whatever got damaged inside of me is made whole. And, and so this went on a little bit, you know. And then by 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, the blood was all cleared up and it's never come back. The blood cleared up and it's never come back. It was 
Matter of fact, I think my water was more clear than it normally is. <laughs> but, but I want you to know something, see, because, because I know the truth. I know the truth. I, I, I believe the truth. I, 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 I apprehend the truth. I, I walk in the truth. I speak the truth. And, and so I, keep the, I try to keep the door shut to the devil. So um, can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, the Bible says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving who? Yourselves. I mean, I run into people all the time that tell me how much faith they have, but yet here they are. They're not doing the word. They're not doing the word. What do I do about it? I just pray for them. Why? Because I can't repent for them. I mean, I, if I could, I would repent. Matter of fact, I, I, when the devil attacks me, I go, like when this was happening, I was saying, because really when I first seen the toilet full of blood, I thought it was one of my boys or something. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, don't let it be Mike or Stephen. Don't, I don't want them to go through this. And when I found out it was me, I was so relieved. I was thinking, well, okay, here we go again. I'm going to fight the fight of faith. But I can't fight. I can believe with them to some extent. But the day comes up when they got to step up to, the, to, to the, the, the home base. Is that what it's called in baseball? Home huh? Plate. Home plate. They got to grab the bat and they got to hit the ball. They got to get a home run. Now, sometimes you might get a foul. You get another hit, you know, or you get a strike, you know. Anyways, repented for not agreeing with God. Seeing it as God sees it, saying it as God says it, believing it as God believes it. Look here before we close. This is so powerful now. Remember I told you, I promised you I was going to show you, show you what Paul said. Look what Paul said in 2 Timothy to Timothy. Paul said this in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. And he, he's talking about being vessels meet for the master who's used. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge who? Himself. Listen. Now this is not just talking about sin. Purge yourself of any thought, any attitude, er, any, any, any motive, any desire that is not God's will. Why? Because if you don't, the devil is eventually going to find a way into your life. Did you know that? Eventually, he's dumb. You have to be dumb to go against God. But eventually, he'll find that door. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel on honor, honor, meet for the master who is prepared in every good work. Jump here down to verse 24. Now he's going to, here's a message to the ministers who are walking in the will of God. Now listen to this now. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Now he's, he's, talk, he's going to talk about you dealing with people. Don't get in bitterness. Don't get in anger. Don't argue with people. You run into people all the time. They, they're, they're convinced that what they're going through is the will of God. Don't argue with them. They're convinced that what they're hearing is the voice of God, though it contract, contradicts the Bible. All the time I run into people like that. Do not argue with them. Say, do not argue with them. Don't, you're not going to help them, but listen, what are we supposed to do, guys? But be what? Gentle unto all men. Now what, now what do we slip into? As God allows, you begin to do what? You teach them. You got to teach them. Listen, man, you've been taught wrong. Your philosophy is all messed up. You've opened the door for the devil. You don't even know it. So you begin to teach them the truth. That's what Jesus did in his three and a half years of ministry. He was trying to teach the people the truth. Teach them. Be patient. That means, you know, it's going to take some time, some time before the light turns on. <laughs> I mean, there's stuff that God tried to deal with me for 20 years, and I didn't know it, you know? Uh, in meekness. What meekness? Instructing those that, oh, here, listen. Paul said, who do what? Look at that. Who oppose themselves. So in other words, because they are their greatest enemy and they think it's the devil. They think it's demons. They think it's the disease. They think it's the problem. See, I knew right from the start that what was going on my, in my body, that wasn't the fight. The fight was my mind. The fight was my attitude. The fight was my words. The fight was in my heart. It wasn't the blood or the damage to my privates. I knew that. I knew that. 
If you got a busted leg, if you got a busted back, I've had it. If you have tumors, they'll fight. People zero in on the symptoms or the manifestations where really the fight is in your heart. Are you getting something tonight out of this? The fight is in your heart. Listen, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon scorpions, serpents, snakes, over all the power of the enemy. And what did he say? Nothing shall come to harm you. Wow. <laughs> Can you grab that tonight? Will you believe that tonight? If you haven't believed it, repent. Really? Repent if you haven't believed that. Listen, it says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, maybe, peradventure, will give them what? What is God going to give them? Repentance. Whoa. Listen, we're talking about somebody who's been taken captive by the devil at his will. And God says the problem is this, that they won't repent. Well, what they, they, listen what it says here. This is so powerful. If God will give them peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the, of the truth. Do you see this? You got to acknowledge the truth. God, your word says by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. He took my pains and carried my infirmities. I acknowledge the truth. You say greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I acknowledge that truth and I repent for not believing it. Can you see we need a tsunami of repentance in the church. The bride has believed the lies of the world, the flesh, the devil, and the so-called experts. Instead of believing God. And they need to repent. If they don't repent, they'll never come out of the snare of the devil. I don't care how many times you pray over them. I don't care how many times you lay hands on them. I don't care how many books they read, how many sermons they watch, until they repent for not believing this book. They will always be under the control of those demonic powers in whatever area of their life that they're experiencing. Now listen... I'm telling you, you look them up. I'm not going to name them. 18 powerful, well-known men of God who had humongous ministries. Some of them I really looked up to. But for some reason, when the enemy attacked their bodies, and instead of repenting for not trusting God and believing God and looking to God, they went to the arm of the flesh and the Bible says King Hezekiah, which was a man of faith, he did not seek the Lord in his infirmity. He went to the medical world and the Bible says he died. Did, did, was that Hezekiah? Asa. Well, I thought there was a godly king also that went, didn't look to God. We'll look at that later. There, there was a godly king. Okay, but there was a king that... That I thought there was a godly king who didn't look to God also. I don't know. In meekness. <laughs> Come on now, guys. In meekness, instruct me. <laughs> Come on. That, listen, that if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Why? Why do you got to acknowledge the truth? That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. The devil set a snare for him. He set a trap for him. Who are taken captive by him at his will. Now Paul the apostle. And I'm going to believe Paul above any other modern day preachers today. Paul said. The reason why these people are being held captive. Is because they will not repent. For not acknowledging the truth. Here's the truth guys. Right here. Here's the truth. You want to get out of the snare of the devil. You, you all that are watching. You want to get healed, you want to get delivered, you want to get set free from that depression, that fear, that anger, that bitterness, that, that affliction, that poverty, whatever it is, here's the truth. Acknowledge you haven't been believing it and begin to believe it. Can you shout amen? 
Oh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. In Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things are become new. How many? All things. Okay, so if you read another translation, it says it this way. For if a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Say the past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Everything has become fresh and new. Say fresh and new. Um, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to salvation. All should come to deliverance. All should come to healing. All should come to freedom. Can you say amen? Then as we close here, I just want to read these scriptures about who God is. Listen, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. God can't lie. Uh, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken? Shall he not make it good? Listen, Titus 2, 1, 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So let's establish that that book is truth and God can't lie. Get a hold of this now. So whatever comes against me, whatever contradicts this book, am I going to embrace that or am I going to embrace what God says? I, don't deny, I didn't deny the blood. But I denied the right for my body to re remain damaged. I don't know what I did to myself, but I, I refuse to let it stay damaged. Well, who, who do you think you are? No, no, no. It's not who I am. It's who Jesus is. I refuse to let my body remain damaged. In the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Christ. I am made whole. Okay. Uh, Hebrews 6, 18, that by two immutable things, and this is, uh, uh, this is what it means, by his word and his oath or his promises in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. For in other words, I got strong confidence in God. Why? Because of his word and that he cannot lie. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Uh, Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of half of them. <laughs> he delivers them out of how many? All. All of them. Yes, the enemy's going to come, but if you trust God, he'll deliver you. Now listen, yeah, but pastor, what if, uh, you know, in the future, you know, you know, somehow you end up dying before your time from a disease. Can I tell you what? Can I tell you what? So what? What do you mean, so what? We all got to die someday. <laughs> Come on, man. I've never seen, listen, you can't take it with you. The Bible says we came in with nothing. It's certain you're going to take, you, you, you ain't going to take nothing with you. I've never seen a hearse being followed by a U-Haul truck. Now I know in heathen nations, they bury their wealth with the, the kings. If I knew where that wealth was, I'd go and dig it up. It ain't helping him one bit. <laughs> if I knew where it was, I'd go dig it up. Psalms 37, 25. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his be seed begging for bread. I've never seen people who are in agreement with God ever have to beg. Not if you're in agreement with God. Lord, I thank you that you meet all my needs according to your riches and glory. Uh, Psalms 91, 16, with long life will I satisfy my salvation. Uh, you know, so let me, let, let, Job, just a little bit about Job. Job, God only counts it as sin in a person's life when that person knows better and still does it their own way. Okay? That's, that God, for in other words, it is sin. But Job, the Bible says that Job, he wasn't sinless. Job never, but see, Job had a lot of weird thoughts. He said, Lord giveth and Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many know that wasn't God? How many know it wasn't God attacking Job? It was the devil in the very beginning. But Job, in 20 chapters almost, he declares it's God who's doing this to him. And his wife tells him, he said, why don't you just curse God and God die? See, Job never got angry with God. He never got bitter at God. He never, he, he, he never got upset with God. He was just living in a state of confusion. And you know what Job said at the very, very end? You know what Job said? Job said, I repent. Well, now, wait a minute. Job... 
What do you mean you repented, Job? Listen, let me close with this. Um, uh, in Job... In Job chapter 40, verse 3, then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. See, up to this time, he didn't realize that he's talking about his thoughts uh, and, and, and his, his, what he thought. He said, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. I'm going to shut my mouth now. He said, I've been talking about things too wonderful. He said, this is what I was taught. He said, this, he said I, I, I've heard you from my ear. Somebody indoctrinated Job with a bunch of garbage. And Job didn't know better. Job didn't know better. How could he know better? He said, but when you showed up, I saw you for who you are. And now I really know the truth. <laughs> See, until Jesus showed up, we really, really didn't know who God was. I mean, you could discover him to some extent in the old covenant. But now that we see Jesus, we see who the Father is. He, he, and God said to Job, he said, Gird up thy loins now like a man, I will demand of thee and declare unto me. Will thou also disannul my judgment? Will thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? For in other words, Job, you've been on a self-righteous ego trip. And he said, listen, you, you, need, you need to wake up. And Job says this, I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine I have seen thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself. Now, this is repentance. Lord, I, I'm so sorry. I've been believing lies. I've been speaking lies. He's been speaking lies. For 20 chapters, he was speaking lies about God that he believed were true because that's what he was taught. But he did it sincerely. Did you know that's why Paul said he was forgiven? Because as Saul, he sincerely believed the Christians were a cult that was raised up of the devil to destroy, destroy the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant. That's why Saul was on the crusade. He really thought these people were of the devil. <laughs> but when Jesus showed up, he says, I am chief among all sinners. He said, I, he, he said wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. For what? For believing lies and false doctrines. I, I've had loved ones that died early. Why'd they die early? They didn't repent. Why, why didn't they repent? Two reasons. Number one, either they didn't know the truth. They didn't know it. So how can you repent from you don't know what's wrong? Right? That, that's what it says. At one time, God overlooked their ignorance but no longer does he allow ignorance because of Jesus Christ that's what it says and he says so number number one they didn't know the truth or number two they heard the truth but there was pride in their heart and they wouldn't repent from that pride and wouldn't begin to do what God told them to do so what does God tell us to do when the enemy comes in right he attacks us humble yourself God your word is truth. I submit myself to you. I'm lining up my mind. I'm lining up my heart. I'm lining up my words. I'm like, now it might be difficult because I've been doing it wrong all these years. And he'll help you. And now devil, you ain't getting, you ain't going, I'm not letting you. Not another step, devil. Not another, no sir, devil. Not another step, I bind you. See, he said bind. He said speak to the mountain. Go, go in Jesus' name. Can, can you all shout amen?